This week on Pure Brews. Kalamazoo beer is definitely the best. We meet the minds behind Arcadia Ales. I see this tremendous enthusiasm for craft beer helping everyone. And I join the brew crew as we experience Rochester Mills. It's fun. It's like an explosion on the tongue. All across America, the craft beer industry is exploding. I'm Ryan Terpstra, professional beer lover. And I'm Shannon Long, certified beer server and owner of Brew Export. Let us be your tour guides behind the scenes, where we will meet the key players and the beer makers and learn how they turn their dreams into reality. We'll be traveling across the state and introducing you to some of Michigan's best beers. It's a craft beer revolution on Pure Brews America. Today we are on the banks of the Kalamazoo River. You can actually kayak up to this brewery. Yeah, it's incredible. This is one of the first places on this revitalized stretch of the river. And if you just had a short trip up the path, you have Arcadia Ales. Established 19 years ago in Battle Creek, Arcadia is one of the original Michigan craft brews. Arcadia, you know, has been around a while. I've been drinking Arcadia beer for a while. All their beers are really good. Kalamazoo beer is definitely the best. The beer's always been good from Arcadia. I celebrate the work that, that these craftsmen and artists have done to create the product that really has attracted folks from all over the country. The quality of the beer, the quality of the restaurant, top notch. There's a lot going on, so highly recommend it. Good staff who care about one another and they care about the customer. And those things are hard to beat. I just enjoy the camaraderie and the friendships and the fellowship that is happening here. Good beers, good times. Now, most folks who get into microbrewing started off as home brewers or maybe they worked in the restaurant industry, but Arcadia owner Tim Surprise just really liked beer. I had been working uh, in the paper industry for about 15 years before I left that profession. Um, I was traveling throughout the United States and overseas and I would go visit local brewers and I became a fan or a beer enthusiast. So I took the flying leap, decided to leave a perfectly good paying job and, and start a brewing company and a restaurant in Battle Creek, Michigan. It was a little slow going to start, but thankfully we had that, that pub and restaurant where we focused on wood-fired pizzas, wood-fired food, and that kind of helped uh, give us some time while we created some demand and, and some understanding of the kind of beers we were making. Arcadia brews about 17 different brands of beer, and while production is still full go in Battle Creek, they needed a little more room, and they found it not far away. About three years ago, engaged the process of designing and building this 32,000 square foot production facility with pub, kitchen, and what will become a uh, riverfront garden and launch. We've been trying and working to develop along this river for years, and now we have this amazing, amazing facility. I think the biggest thing we love is this outdoor area. People were doing yoga. <laughs> I watched cool. and I felt like I pulled a muscle. Kalamazoo loves beer and I love yoga, so why not marry the two? <laughs> it's true. Yoga classes, disc golf, a fire pit, it all happens outside at Arcadia. Wow, that was exhausting. I'm sweaty, but I'm definitely ready for a nice cold Arcadia AL right now. <laughs> it's great. I mean, any place that is so community driven, I think it's really important. When you can get all of Kalamazoo together, practice yoga, play disc golf, eat food, kayak, I mean, couldn't ask for any more. We're excited that this place has grown in this way. In terms of making their beer, Arcadia blends some old school knowledge with something that has become uniquely their own. So we learned an, an authentic traditional method of, of making beer that includes the old school British and or Belgian way of, of single infusion mash with simple equipment and open fermentation. We make English style ales, but we make a lot of big American IPAs with an English yeast strain, so it's, it's a weird spin on it. 
Everything we do is brewed with a single yeast strain, which is the Ringwood yeast strain, which has its own reputation. But honestly, we've, we've been using Ringwood for so long and we've been repitching it for so long that it is it has mutated into our own yeast strain. It's an Arcadia so, Ales yeast strain. Truly it is. Admittedly, I think I'm proud of the whole body of work, uh, and I think it reflects the real, the real commitment from our brew crew and our, and our production team about making the best possible product we can. Keep Date, which is a, a session ale that we just released, released in package this year. It's brewed with Citra, Simcoe, and, and Malone hops, which yeah. are pretty big name hops right now. We wanted to see how low of a gravity beer we could make. Yeah, low gravity means just easy mouthfeel, not much alcohol. I love it. I love, I love the beer, I love the name. It's great. But it's great for, you know, a warm, sunny day. The ingredients they list, you actually taste in the beer, which is huge to have. It's not too heavy. They don't really do anything too heavy where you just feel full afterwards. You always feel satisfied. You always look for maybe an introductory type of beer for people who want to come in and say, I don't want to go pedal to the metal right away. What should I try? And I think this is a great spot for them to begin. This is the gate. Talk about what you guys offer here in terms of the food. We're bringing a Carolina style, a Memphis style, a Texas style of barbecue in all that we're doing, including some pretty cool and some uh, twisted barbecue items as well. And we wanted to recreate that here because we saw that as a real opportunity, not only for Southwest Michigan, but as a distinctive component to what we're doing and what we're offering with our beers. This one gets probably as much play in all of our markets as wow. any of them. This is eight and a half percent alcohol going to 10. Do I hear 11? That's incredibly balanced. The malt, the three C's, well balanced. They're not overpowering each other. It's quite delicious. So I got the hot mouth, 8.1, can't go wrong. It's kind of my go-to when I come here. The hoppier, more citrus, you know, in your face. You know, hop forward yeah. beers is what I like. It's very smooth, very easy to drink. Phenomenal. It's the most drinkable, enjoyable double IPA in the market. <laughs> Slanjaba. 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 We have certainly exceeded any expectations that we had going into this 19 years ago. I feel blessed, really, to have had this opportunity. I see this tremendous uh, enthusiasm for craft beer helping everyone raising the bar and elevating our game and being better at what we do, creating more innovative, uh, distinctive products, building better quality uh, into our, every one of the kegs and bottles that we package. We're in about 10 uh, states right now. Uh, we will expand probably over the long term to about 15, but we're very grateful and never saw this kind of success coming, but looking forward to the future. Still to come on Pure Brews, we attend the biggest beer party in the state. Yeah, man, we're here today at the, uh, at the Summer Beer Fest. We're having a blast. And Rochester Mills opens their doors to our crew. This is about as fresh as it gets. When we return on Pure Brews America. Pure Brews America is presented to you by Meyer, where you can choose from over 200 Michigan craft beers. Ever since we first opened our doors, we've been committed to developing relationships with the very best local farmers. Because we thought that would be a sensible way to offer our customers the best, freshest produce at the lowest possible prices. Now, 80 years later, this whole locally grown thing has gotten pretty fashionable. Whoever thought common sense would be so cool, hip, and trendy? Come see for yourself. At Lawrence Technological University, you'll go way beyond the books. Professors with real-world experience deliver hands-on instruction in small classes, helping students land co-ops, internships, and research projects. By graduation, 80% of LTU students have jobs or plans to pursue master's degrees. And most Lawrence Tech grads earn more than their peers. So if you're ready to embrace your possibilities, we want you at LTU. We're the Cronin Law Firm, bringing more to the table. 
and you sit down with attorney Sabrina Cronin and her law firm, they'll stand up for your rights. Backed by a full-service investigative division, Cronin Law delivers results, whatever your legal issues may be, your problems on the table, and see how much more Cronin Law can do for you. We're the Cronin Law Firm, bringing more to the table. Before you choose a luxury SUV, stop by Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln and drive the amazing new Lincoln MKX. It's a stunning new expression of luxury with inspired performance and design and a long list of standard features. The all new Lincoln MKX, now available at Hoot McInerney Star Lincoln, 12 mile road just east of Telegraph. Best price, smart choice, and you get the star treatment. America is sponsored by Hoop McInerney Star Lincoln, located at 12 Mile and Telegraph in Southfield. One water, one beer is a good rule. It is a marathon, not a sprint. There are a ton of beer festivals that take place in Michigan annually, but we knew the Michigan Brewers Guild's Summer Beer Festival was one we could not miss. There's gonna be about 13,000 people here drinking 950 beers. Got the goodies, now let's go drink. Three, two, one, we are now open. Yeah, man, we're here today at the uh, at the Summer Beer Fest, 2015 Summer Beer Fest at the Paw Paw Brewing Company tent. We're having a blast. We've seen some weirdness around here. It's, it's been good, everyone has a good time, but Absolutely. when you get a bunch of brewers together, um, strange things tend to happen. I'm in a giant beer costume, and you have a massive t-shirt launcher. Is that correct? We do. This is like a two-story structure you've built here. Yep, I mean, it's fun to, to build booths and you know make people happy, and hear people yell and scream and have a good time. So, I mean, that's, I think, one of the best parts of it is, you know, just doing it in general. This is the 18th annual Summer Beer Fest and the crowds keep getting bigger and the beer keeps getting wilder. This is the first Michigan Brewers Guild Summer Festival was in Livonia. I think they had six or 700 people there. This year, we have close to a thousand beers here. So we have more beers this year than we had people the first year. With nearly a thousand beers here to sample, Michigan Brewers Guild President Eric Brigaman has some advice for people who might get a little overwhelmed. My recommendation is to always go to try some breweries that you've never been to. A new brewery, just something you it's too far away from your house and you just don't ever have a chance to get there. I definitely have some on my list. I've already hit Pike 51 an hour, which are two of my favorites. I'm west side of the state, so I try to hit them as often as possible. So I'm just gonna walk around and I don't think you can take a bad turn once you're in there. You may think that the star of the festival would be the beer, but hands down, all the brewers said the people is what keeps them coming back year after year. So what's your kind of favorite part about Summer Beer Festival? Uh, it's getting out and meeting the people. Me, you know, it's this is what this is all about, right? Is it's craft beer, it's meeting all the people that love craft beer, and so that's why we're here. We really appreciate Everything that everybody that drinks Michigan beer and talks about Michigan beer has done, and I would say just keep doing it. it there, there's more than ever, it's fresher than ever, it's better than ever, it's easier to get than ever, and there's still a lot of people that don't know. So keep sharing a beer with your friends and turning new people on to what's happening. Hi, I'm Amanda, and we're going to be cooking with beer. We're going to be making a prosciutto and apple flatbread, which we're going to make with a wheat beer. Here's a list of the ingredients that we're using today. You can pick them all up at your local Meyer. So with the beer, we want to measure our full cup from where the actual line of the beer is, not including the head on the beer. So I'm going to go ahead and add our flour here with the mixer turned off. So I've just got this on a low setting right now. We don't want a big cloud of flour dust everywhere. I'm going to go ahead and add my salt. And now we're going to go ahead and add our cold butter cubes. Now that we have all of our dry ingredients mixed together, I'm going to go ahead and add in our beer it's going to actually be acting as our leavening ingredient, so it's gonna help give the flatbread some texture and not make it so hard. So you can see our dough is starting to come together. If it gets a little bit too sticky, you can add more flour. Same thing, if it gets too dry, you can definitely add more beer, we're all for that. We want the dough on the pretty thin side. We want it to be nice and crispy. The thicker you get your dough, the harder it is to get it crispy. So we're gonna go ahead and prick it just a little bit before we put it in the oven, this lets some of the steam escape. 
We've got our flatbread crust in for about 10 minutes, give or take. Um, some ovens are a little bit hotter than others, so just make sure you keep an eye on it. First, we're adding our beer over medium heat, and we're gonna let that cook down for four to five minutes. When we use the beer, what it's gonna do is it's gonna caramelize along with the apples and the brown sugar, and it's gonna give you a nice flavor on your flatbread. We're just looking for this to reduce down. If it gets foamy like this, don't let that bother you. Just go ahead and whisk it a little bit. Now I'm gonna add the butter and the brown sugar. Right now we're looking for the butter to melt down a little bit, but we also want to keep it moving so we don't burn any of the butter or the sugar. You can see the sauce start to thicken up. I'm going to add the apples. Now I'm mixing the apples with our beer reduction, and we're gonna let these cook until they become slightly soft. Flatbread's ready. Now it's time to top our flatbread. Now we're going to add prosciutto, blue cheese, and the apples we cooked. Sprinkle a little olive oil on top to finish it off. What you want to look for when it's done is melted cheese and color on your apples. And to finish the flatbread off, we're going to add a little bit of balsamic reduction and some fresh ground pepper. And that is how you make prosciutto and apple flatbread using wheat beer. At Pure Brews America, we not only want to introduce you to all kinds of new beer, we want to make sure that you find the one that's right for you. And to do that, we're enlisting help from our friends at Meyer. They have over 200 Michigan craft beers to choose from, and they want to make it easy for you to find the beer that fits your taste. Let's say you're shopping at your local Meyer and you want to try something new from the over 2,000 worldwide beer brands that they carry. Well, fire up your phone, log on to Meyer.com slash selection. Now scroll down to the section titled Pick Your Pour. This brand new addition to the Meyer website uses eight different flavor profiles to sort the beers that Meyer carries in your local store. The different flavor styles are color coded. So if you're a fan of hoppy and bitter beers, you click on the green tab. And that's where you'll find Sky High Rye from Arcadia Brewing Company. If happy beer isn't your thing, maybe you prefer something crisp and balanced. Then slide on over and you'll find a beer like Pine Knob Pilsner from Rochester Mills. So not only does Meyer have the lowest craft beer prices allowable by law, they also have the biggest selection. And they are making sure that you have the best possible experience when you shop there. Blog on to Meyer.com slash selection and make sure you're getting the right beer for your taste buds using Pick Your Pour. Up next on Pure Brews, we visit a one-of-a-kind brewery on the east side of the state. Well, Rochester Mills has got the best beer, I think, you know. That's next on Pure Brews America. It's time for On Tap Trivia, brought to you by the Michigan Brewers Guild. Hops are a key ingredient, generally used for flavoring and stability. How many hop varieties are grown around the world? 65, 90, 100, or 150? Technological University, you'll go way beyond the books. Professors with real-world experience deliver hands-on instruction in small classes, helping students land co-ops, internships, and research projects. By graduation, 80% of LTU students have jobs or plans to pursue master's degrees. And most Lawrence Tech grads earn more than their peers. So if you're ready to embrace your possibilities, we want you at LTU.
Welcome back. How many hop varieties are grown around the world? 65, 90, 100, or 150? If you guess 100, you are correct. These days, Cascade, Centennial, and Chinook are among the most popular varieties. Today on Pure Brews America, not only are we in a brewery with delicious beer, but we've got live music. Just another day at Rochester Mills. Cheers. This used to be a yarn mill back in the day where they've turned into now a very nice restaurant. Established in 1998 in downtown Rochester, this brew pub is both a historic and a delicious landmark. It's beautiful. I love it. I love the outside. It's hard to find a place that has good craft brew and live entertainment. You can't find this place anywhere else. It's not like a chain place. This is the only place you can find Rochester beer. Great tasting, great beer. It's local. Well, I like the beer a lot. The beer is good. Rochester Mills has got the best beer, I think, you know. Great seasonal beers. It's fun. It's like an explosion on the tongue. So that's what I like, it's all the varieties you get to pick from. It's just fun to try new things and not just drink the same thing all the time. Uh, we think the beer speaks for itself, so go out and grab a four pack. For 15, 16 years, top producing brew pub in the state of Michigan. 700,000 plus customers that are coming through that facility. That's a lot of people moving through just one location, but when you talk to Rochester Mills fans, they see no reason not to keep coming back. You know, there's the flavor, the taste, but there's also the atmosphere. Great food, great beer, great ambiance. It's a great culture here. The atmosphere, the family, the, the energy behind it, that's, that's what we enjoy as much as the flavor. There's something in the water, we'll just put it that way. Cheers. While the pub still brews beer, most of that stuff remains on site. In order to meet the consumer demand outside of Rochester, the company opened a massive production facility in the spring of 2012. Beer is a science. If you don't take that seriously, then you're going to, uh, you're going to put out an inferior product. Every brewery has shiny tanks. Every brewery experiments with different things, whether it's bourbon barrel aging or some unique flavored beers or whatever. Our brewers put a lot of time and energy and pride into making good, high quality, uh, pretty true to style beers. Taking it out of a pub and putting it into a, a manufacturing facility is really what you need to do for your consumer. You have to do that so that they know what they're buying is going to taste the same pretty much batch to batch to batch to batch. Every Michigander loves a good IPA. You guys got an IPA, tell us about it. And every brewery makes an IPA, or, or they should anyway. The IBUs, or International Bittering Units, is right in the, the range of a, a typical American IPA, uh, but it has a malt backbone, so there's a, a little maltiness to it, a little body. I'm drinking the IPA. An IPA, I, I never liked a bitter flavor. They've got just complexities and they take the taste to a new level. I like bitter beer all of a sudden. I, I like the IPA. I really like hoppy beers, but when they also have the floral taste to them, I like that part too. It's a balanced IPA, which IPA in theory shouldn't be balanced because I, hops should be the predominant flavor profile. So it's a, an approachable IPA. It gives you that hop interest, but also doesn't, uh, doesn't leave you with nothing to back it up in the, middle, in, the, in the back of your throat. Well, you can't go to an awesome production facility like this and not have a little fun, right? So Shannon scored herself an invite to join the Rochester Mills production team. You ready to be part of the brew crew? Yes. Outfitted you with a shirt and everything? Nice, I'm excited. Cool, we're gonna put you to work on a couple of minor things, nothing major. Okay. We're gonna put fermented Oktoberfest beer into a firkin. We're gonna prime it with some fresh wort from today's brew, which is our Rochester Red. And then as soon as that's full, uh, we're gonna give you the big wooden mallet and have you pound the bong in the top of it. Yeah, I was nervous. I thought I was, I had to get two hands. I was scared I was gonna totally miss it, but yeah. three shots later. You look like you were part of the strongman competition yeah, there. Really pound down on it. The beer of the day flowing through this production facility is probably the most recognizable brand that you're gonna find on store shelves. 
Milkshake Stout brings all the boys to the yard. I don't know if that's been said yet, so I had to say it. The name Milkshake Stout is a clever name. The name will sell it once, but the quality will continue to sell it again and again and again and again. But uh, the name is derived from the fact that it uses lactose in the brewing process, which is milk sugar. And milk sugar is not fermentable by brewing yeast, so it stays behind in the beer, giving you a little body and a hint of sweetness. It's fun to find a particular angle, a particular flavor that this small spot has developed. The lactose kind of takes the edge off the roasted, dry roasted character from the dark grains that are used in that beer. But with the lactose added, it kind of smooths that right out and it makes it a super creamy, easy to drink beer. So something you guys do differently than a lot of other breweries is all you do is do cans. Yes, we feel it's better for the beer. It doesn't let any light in like a bottle does, so you don't have any light struck or skunky beer issues. Um, there's a little less head space in there, so you have very little air or oxygen uh, intake into the beer once it's, you know, if it sits on the shelf for a little bit. It takes less energy to recycle aluminum than it does glass. And Michigan is full of outdoor activities, whether it's boating, canoeing, fishing, golf courses galore. Most of those places don't let you take glass. It makes the can a much more usable or user-friendly uh, package to have the beer. So you ready to help out on the canning line a little bit? I am. All right, ready? This is my day. All right, yeah. let's do it. Our canning line starts with our depalletizer, which okay. is a, we basically slide a pallet of cans in there, and we have an operator that has to go up and raise the pallet up, and then slide a layer of cans off onto a conveyor, get into a single file line, they get turned upside down in a track, get rinsed out with uh, filtered water, and then uh, drain a little bit, and then get twisted right back, right side up. They actually pass through a UV light to just kill any other bacteria that may be present right before they go into the can filler. And then the lids get placed on top of the cans, goes into our seamer, and then uh, gets rinsed off, and then uh, heads down to the, the ringer where you'll come into play. Okay. You're gonna be helping these guys uh, pull the four packs off the line as they're done, and you're gonna take them, we usually turn the cans because the logo looks better facing out. Make it look pretty. Throw them in the case tray and then help uh, palletize mm -hmm. them. Uh, this is about as fresh as it gets. This Ooh. stuff was canned about a half an hour ago. So. Delicious, cheers, cheers to that, thank you. So today we visited a historical building, we drank some delicious beer, and somehow you became part of the Rochester Mills Brewing Crew. What's up with that? Yes, I know you're jealous. I'm actually not jealous, and I'll tell you why. Because I have this. Ha ha, cheers. Get out of here. <laughs> Coming up next week on Pure Brews America, we pick up some decorating tips. We had a one review and a guy said that it looked like a garage sale threw up in our tap room. Don't miss our trip to Marshall as we meet the guys and girls behind Dark Horse Brewery. And we'll also introduce you to one of the hidden gems of the Michigan beer scene. You know, we go to Denver to the Great American Beer Festival and we're walking through the crowd and people stop him because they want to talk to him. Rock is a superstar. We head to Bastogne Brewery in Royal Oak. All of that and more next week on Pure Brews America.